evening, I'm Lieutenant Dan Taylor, currently assigned into Company 14. On September 11, 2001, Ladder Company 3 was operating at the World Trade Center. After the planes hit and destroyed the repeater system, normal communication methods used using portable radios were sporadic at best. Ladder 3's commander, Captain Patrick John Brown, used a landline telephone to call the FDNY's Manhattan Communications Center. He gave a brief progress report of what they were facing in a calm, professional voice. Now, imagine yourself in that building on that day, along with Captain Brown as you hear these words. Dispatch, Captain Brown, Ladder 3. I'm at the World Trade Center. I'm on the 35th floor, okay? Just relay to the command post. We're trying to get up. There are numerous civilians in all stairwells. Numerous burn injuries are trying to come down. We're trying to send them down first. Apparently, it's above the 75th floor. I don't know if they've got there yet. Three truck and we're still heading up, okay? Thank you. These words would be forever immortalized when shortly after this transmission, Captain Brown and everyone on Ladder 3 were killed as the tower collapsed. Ladder 3's moniker has been the, re the recon truck because they always seek out and rescue those who are in the most danger first. The actions of what they did along with the numerous memories of each of their crew members will be long remembered. I would like to share with you a look into the life of their leader and mentor, Captain Patty Brown. If the train will <laughs> He had an amazing career being appointed to the FDY in 1977. And he served 24 years on the job with a larger than life legend that followed him. Pat performed more rescues and saved more lives than most could ever dream of. However, the most important part of Patty's story is not about all the wonderful things he did, but it was rather the way in which he did them. He was one of the most well-known New York City firefighters because he had been awarded more than 21 medals and citations over those many years by several mayors and fire commissioners. Even though he was often in the company of dignitaries and famous people, Patty remained humble and private. As a testament to his character, all of the money that Pat received from those numerous awards was quietly donated to the Cornell University Burn Unit. When Patty first came to Ladder 3, firefighters like Mike Moran, who later eulogized him at his funeral, would say, this can't be the man they call Pat Brown. He's not big enough. He's eight feet tall. This was similarly depicted in the movie, a scene from the movie Braveheart, where William Wallace's new followers couldn't believe that he was actually the great man that they had been told about. Mike went on to say, he wasn't that big, but his heart was. And to hear stories in the legend of Captain Patty Brown was to be inspired. We all knew he was in charge, and not because he yelled, but because he spoke softly. He was humble, and he always led by example. A simple request from him was like a shouted order from another. This all started when Patty was young, growing up in Queens, New York. He and his friend would ride, listen to their radio scanner and then ride their bicycles to countless fires, watching, learning, and taking in as much as they could. At age 17, Pat joined the Marine Corps and became a decorated sergeant while serving two tours in Vietnam. He returned home and continued his service in the Marine Corps Reserve. As life continued, Patty earned a degree in psychology, became a Golden Gloves boxer, and was a second degree black belt in karate. He taught self-defense to the blind and always seemed to be in the right place at the right time to help someone truly in need or just carry groceries for an elderly person. Pat's sister-in-law, Janet Brown, said of him, Pat never did anything halfway. He was very intense, very deep, extremely polite, and very serious. She recalls how he used to enjoy running so much that he completed six marathons. Firefighter Mike Moran remembers Pat's positive impact on the Ladder 3 crew in these remarks. In the firehouse kitchen during those informal chats, Patty took an interest in the lives of his men and their well-being. He was a great listener and storyteller. Pat's strength, courage, and experience were a tremendous comfort in tough times. When Pat would talk with us, he would secretly teach us the FD way, the Ladder 3 way, and most importantly, the Patty Brown way. He was loved and respected because he lived his life so well. He enjoyed just being in the kitchen with us and never stopped being a firefighter. Pat only cared if you showed enthusiasm and were willing to learn. 
He cared about you and not about how important or famous you were. Patty didn't prejudge you. He let you prove yourself to him. He had a way of leading you to a place where you didn't want to let him down. Firefighter Mike Moran continued in these kind words about Patty. If you had a request or a problem and went to see Pat for help, his usual reply went along the lines of, don't worry, we'll see what we can do, we'll take care of it. Anything for his men was his philosophy. I could see the guys from Three Truck and the World Trade Center turning one last time to Patty and being comforted by a nod of his head, a shy smile, and he would say to them, don't worry, fellas, we'll take care of it, and they were inspired. Patty was so passionate, complicated, a devoted friend, a warrior, and someone who made a difference. In May of 1991, Pat was working in Rescue Company 1 and made a dramatic midday rescue using rope from the roof of a high-rise building in Manhattan. Two men were trapped in windows on the 13th floor on opposite sides of the building by a fast-moving fire with high heat and smoke conditions. With the fire raging out of control and these two civilians in danger, Patty led his team to the roof and directed two separate roof rescues, rope rescues, that saved their lives. These amazing rescues were captured by every news station in the city and aired on a TV show hosted by John Walsh called Firehouse. You can view Firehouse on YouTube and see these acts of bravery today. In 2011, the Ladder 3 truck that was destroyed was lowered into the ground of the 9-11 Museum and preserved for generations to come. Next to the museum are two gigantic World Trade Center reflecting ponds that outline the base of where both towers stood. The names of the Ladder 3 crew, along with all of the other FDNY members that were lost, are written on those pond walls. We will never forget these selfless firefighters and what they did the many rescues they made, and the countless people that evacu they evacuated from those buildings. This evening, we celebrate the 343 FDNY members who gave their lives to save others that day. As one of those members, Captain Petty Brown is still riding on Ladder 3. He is softly and quietly leading his crew as they continue to help and save others. And I believe he is telling them with a nod of his head and a shy smile, don't worry, fellas, we'll take care of it. And they continue to be inspired. Pat's spirit may live on in each one of us if we choose to perform simple random acts of kindness for others, do the best we can with a humble heart in all that we do, and continue to walk in his example by living our lives the Patty Brown way. service are confronted with a more dangerous work environment than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our tasks. Our methods may change, but our goals will remain the same as they were in the past, to save lives and property, sometimes at a terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is the tradition of the firefighters. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but it's steep in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of a bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow citizens. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled to all the completion of that call. When a firefighter had died in the line of duty, paying their supreme sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols, which reflect honor and respect for those who have given so much and who have served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls have for their duty, a special signal of three rings, three 
time each represents the end of our comrades' duties and that they will be returning to quarters. And so, to those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their task completed, their duties well done, to our comrades, their last alarm, they are going home. September 11th, 2001, will be a day that none of us have ever forgotten. Most of you can remember where you were on that fateful morning. This day will forever be etched in our souls, and it is up to us to not allow this day to ever be forgotten. Unfortunate as that day was, the world came to know that we, the United States of America, became reunited with solidarity and our country coming together as one. We fought together, we prayed together, we assisted one another in whatever help was needed because we all treated one another as family. Gender, age, race, religion, political party affiliation, and sexual orientation played no role on to who would or would not be a victim that day. The only discrimination used that morning was the fact that you were an American. The sacrifice of giving one's life for another was immortalized on September 11th. 343 firefighters, 37 Port Authority police officers, and 23 New York City police officers upheld their oath of protecting others and saved thousands of lives. to this day, 17 years later, 
continue to haunt America. Thousands of Americans, which include the first responders, have become ill or have died from the direct result of exposure to toxins at ground zero. The candlelight vigil that we hold every year in Orlando is very personal to our department. We have Orlando firefighters who previously worked for the FDNY that are members with us. We have Orlando firefighters that were previously employed with us that have left and became members of the FDNY. And we have Orlando firefighters who have family and friends that are currently active with the FDNY. Many members of this department lost very close friends in the attacks. And I am sure there are citizens, tourists, and even visitors that are here tonight that have lost a family member or a friend on that horrific day. We will never forget the events of September 11th. However, we hope that the candlelight vigil that is held each year can bring a step in the right direction of healing, support, and strength. God bless you. God bless America. And thank you all for coming tonight.